The scripture for today's message is Exodus chapter 20, verse 15. You shall not steal. Emmanuel Choir and his orchestra will glorify God with their praise and performance, and then senior pastor will deliver the message under the title, The Ten Commandments, Eighth Commandment. Let me introduce today's flower offering. It's offered up by t a e j o n Mami Church. This year, t a e j o n Mami Church celebrates its 33rd anniversary. Through the, all this time, we have become more beautiful, become more stronger, and we are filled with longing for New Jerusalem. Uh, we give thanks to senior pastor and Ms. Bong Lim Lee, who is, has been encouraging us and leading us be, with the gospel of holiness. We, with a resolve to run even more vigorously with the longing for sanctification, we um, give this flower offering. Dear brothers and sisters, now that you've listened to the sermons up to the seventh commandment, Are you keeeping the Tenth Commandment? Can you confidently say that you do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain and keep the Sabbath day holy? If you know the spiritual meanings behind these commandments, many of you may think you are keeping them even when it's actually the opposite. But how grateful we are that we can now understand the will of our Father God. Today, we will look at the Eighth Commandment of You Shall Not Steal. This commandment also carries spiritual meanings that differ from worldly perception. In the name of the Lord, I hope you will all be enriched by these teachings and become blameless and flawless children of God. Brothers and sisters, there are two main connotations to the commandment, you shall not steal. First, there is the physical definition of stealing. This refers to taking or acquiring another person's property without permission. Even worldly people know such stealing is wrong and sinful. But if someone is accused of being a thief, but I mean, if, but if someone is accused of being a thief despite not having stolen anything, they would likely feel very displeased and wronged. But in fact, many people engaged in the theft that they don't class as stealing. While committing wrongdoings, they don't realize it, thereby making themselves a thief. For example, they may take someone else's belongings without permission, without pangs of conscience. They think, they think it is acceptable because they are close friends or the item is inexpensive and unimportant. People who use other people's belongings out of necessity should return it immediately afterwards, but they often don't. In a, such things may not be considered a problem in the family, but we have to fix that. Oh, let me talk about this. In, among, between husband and wife, if a husband still, um, uses the money uh, out of uh, her, his wife's pocket, it is not right. Let's say people have the, their delivery and they Uh, they there are times when they, have, when they have to pay money instantly, so they take money from his, their spouse's pocket, wallet, and use it. After they use it, they have to uh, confess it, no matter how small the amount is. This is taking 
another person's uh, money. This is uh, her personal belonging. So that's why we have to ask for permission in advance or if we accidentally... Some of you may wonder, is this a fault? But let's say your children takes the money out of your wallet or out of your pocket, your child does that and pays it for uh, his personal use. You may think it is wrong. Of course, if you tell him in advance, then you can... You, you, so, but it's better for the parents to give the, I mean, as, and if it's better for the parents, so, So it's better for the parents to give their uh, child to, uh, money rather than ask, uh, letting them take the money out of their pocket. Uh, as their child takes the, takes the money out of their parents' pocket, he may be in the habit of So, as they develop such a habit, once the, they have such a habit, it is difficult to fix it. This is an example um, a child taking money out of uh, his parents' pocket and using it. This is clearly wrong, you may think. But it's the same between the spouse, spouses, husband or wife. And if you think that, you know, you think that a, a child taking money out of his parents' pocket is wrong. This is, usually people think of it as wrong. But, but let's say uh, some, some parents just uh, let their child use uh, their money in the pocket whenever they want. So ch their children develop a habit of taking money out of their pocket and, and they... Once they develop such a habit, they may develop similar habits in other areas too. This is uh, how the way we are taught affects our conscience. Even so, there should be respect between husband and wife. They have their own privacy. they should not open their uh, wallet, open their and that their children would and then such habits the, because of habits the formed in ourselves we may not think something is wrong so if a husband and wife have a different uh, concept of uh, they, so people easily use another person's belongings and think it is okay and So, so that's why stealing happens even among, uh, even between a husband and wife. We, when we, we learned about the Ten Commandments and we also learned about the laws of the Old Testament times. And we learned about the laws and statutes. 
And, and, the sh and the shepherd also, uh, back in 1990s, uh, um, he also said that, uh, for example, he also, the shepherd said that uh, when you use another person's uh, pen or pencil, you have to add, use it after asking for permission. But, but let's say so the, the owner is not there, but you may, you may use it for your... You know, but there are many times you use another person's pencil and bring it home, and you forget to give it back, and you f you bring it back, and but if you don't make a habit of, so there are people who bring it back home. So you have to fix. These habits, this is a wrong habit. Why? This is like using another person's belongings without permission. This is wrong. And you have to carry your own items and you, you, you try not to use others' belongings so that you may not make a mistake. So, so people also use another person's belongings and take it home and so that's why it's better for us to but, but people who don't uh, do that always make a mistake they borrow others belongings and then when they habitually borrow others belongings and make mistakes and they don't realize that because they are in the habit of doing that they don't they don't think of it as a uh, wrong and they don't think it, it is a big deal you, you have to realize that and fix your self I mean if you I mean Let's say you, you borrow others' belongings and don't give it back. This is uh, taking someone's possession. So this is uh, stealing. Uh, this behavior not only causes financial loss, but, it, but it's also disrespectful. You may say, I didn't disrespect him. You know, um, borrowing someone from your boss, borrowing someone from uh, your is is not e easy. But let's say another person is your close friends or your colleagues, you easily borrow it, but you have to make sure to give it back. So. If, but if you think uh, the relate, you have a relate, close relationship with others, you may end up doing something disrespectful regardless of how trivial the item or how close the relationship using something without the owner's permission is considered theft in God's eyes. Some people simply ask for things they need saying, give it to me or lend it to me. Give it. I mean, they easily say, oh, please give it to me. This is uh, causing loss to another person very easily. Some of you may think it is not a big deal, but if, you, if such things pile up, it turns into a big issue. Um, there are, let's say, you, when you, uh, in your family, when you buy some, uh, when there are, buy one, get one free item, and when I get one, 
I try to when I get when I get one buy one and get one free item I, when I give it to Ms. Bong Lim Lee Ms. Bong Lim Lee refuses to receive it he, she wants to give him money because she doesn't want, want to become a person who always receives some of you may think it is not a big deal but, but she, so she tries to keep herself from, a, from being a person who uh, always received So, if you do that, does it, uh, in doing so, we can always, and this is uh, how we serve each other in the family. Um, but if you, because the item is trivial, and when we receive something and we give we have to have a heart of service heart of serving each other and that way the relationship can I mean some Um, they may not return the items after borrowing them, or if they do, the items may be worn or shrink, causing loss to the owner. Brazenly asking for someone else's belonging is also embarrassing. A person with a pure conscience will feel guilty about taking anything that doesn't belong to them, no matter how small. Even if something is not outright stolen or taken by force, unjustly occurring what is not yours also constitutes theft. For example, a person of goodness will feel a pang of conscience if they were to receive a bribe by abusing their position or power, or if they were a business charging excessive, pro charging excessive prices to exploit customers. Even if an item wasn't stolen, taking what you are not rightfully entitled to technically falls into the category of theft. But this perspective indeed differs from a worldly view. In the world, there are those who feel pleased to overcharge naive customers and don't consider it wrong. When they, there are a proper prices in the world. They, there are, there are appropriate pr prices. So, even the same item may be different in prices depending on where they are sold. If you get something at a department store, the prices could be higher because and But there are people who rip off their customers uh, in Korea. Um, I mean, there are also people who rip off the foreign tourists, like taxi drivers. And when you report such ripping off, or such ripoffs, they are. caught. This is like um, fraud. Like these cases, when you run a business, when you sell something, you, you shouldn't take, receive um, more than you are rightfully receive. And this is also stealing. Why? Yet, uh, because I mean, the truth is that deceiving others and causing harm for personal gain is sinful. By self-reflecting self through this pure and beautiful truth, we can emerge as a beautiful bride of the Lord without a single blemish. You may think of this, think of this as, you know, there are items that people, uh, 
fa- family members use, use together. I'm not talking about that, but there are personal belongings that each family member use. When we are to use, use those items, we have to ask for permission. And when we when we use some this is a a beautiful heart and good heart and a good conscience when we live like that we can also emerge as the beautiful bride of the Lord Brothers and sisters, the second connotation is spiritual stealing, which is stealing from God. This kind of theft directly affects salvation. Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples, was entrusted to manage the money and everything provided by the people, but he, but he mismanaged them and became a thief. ultimately allowing himself to be influenced by Satan and betray Jesus. Despite having been called as a disciple and received the opportunity for great glory, Judas is carried accumulated sin. Not able to receive the spirit of repentance, he committed suicide and faced a miserable end. It's the same today. Some people attend church, yet they misuse God's funds. Even worldly people would feel fear when stealing from the church. But if someone who claims to believe in God misuses church's funds, does he truly have faith for salvation? On the surface, they may appear to live a Christian life and fulfill their duties, but being blocked by the great walls of sin already, they are unaware of seriousness of their actions. If their sins remain hidden and go unpunished, it is even more frightening. Even if people, even if people are unaware, God is certainly watching and justice will surely come in due time. If a person fails to repent and ultimately faces the seven-year tribulation as a thief of God's finances, how much will they have to lament and regret? In the name of the Lord, I strongly urge everyone listening not to invite such disasters upon yourselves. Even if, even if you haven't directly stolen church offerings, misusing sacred items or mishandling church finances can also be considered stealing from God. Let's take a look at some. So, this church has taught that even pastors should not touch the church's finances. And, and that's what our branch churches do. In the church, The pastors are not in charge of the church finances, but uh, but the church workers are entrusted. But instead, they uh, put church workers in charge of the money, and so they make sure that uh, the God's money is used properly. But if they don't do so, if pastors decide how the money is used. If if pastors have have a reason to spend money, he first has to make his church workers uh, ask for church workers a a permission or agreement. So, So, we have to make sure that we don't uh, create a wall of sin before God with the church's finances. Uh, Let's take a look at some specific examples. Using membership fees or funds that have been contributed to a mission or a group for personal reason is unacceptable. Billing for office supplies for church work and using them personally is also unacceptable. There are money... Um, that 
that, for example, uh, our flower arrangements, when you, you offer the flower arrangement, uh, they, they buy flowers. I mean, uh, when the flowers became, uh, prices of the flowers be, have decreased and the uh, unspent funds Go to should go back to the church's treasury. I mean, even when and they do the flower arrangement, and they and then and they the, and the rest of the flowers and are used uh, for the other churches. other areas, and it shouldn't be used for private use. And Levi workers and pastors, and when they buy church supplies, they use church's finance, and they have to report uh, the purpose of the buying those items. They have to, they have to, uh, to find the cheapest prices, and then and don't they shouldn't recklessly buy things because it, it is the church's money they should not also take those items home and use it for personal purposes and whatever they buy with the God's finances shouldn't be used for private use wastefully spending church funds to purchase items when they could be used more frugally, using unspent funds for other purposes instead of returning them is also a misuse of finances. Additionally, if you use them arbitrarily for private use, it is stealing. Additionally, using church phones or supplies for personal use is not acceptable. When using the church items, people often waste them. They wouldn't do so if they had to bear the cost. But if you truly love and respect God, you will value them even more than your own because they belong to God. Parents should ensure that their children do not play with or tear church's envelopes or bulletins. Some children, they um, they have to teach their kids so that even when they are young, they learn to respect God and honor God. They 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 have to distinguish. So as a child grows up, he. wouldn't find it difficult to honor and to respect God. Though these may seem trivial, each action can create a spiritual barrier in your relationship with God. Brothers and sisters, God warns against spiritual theft, particularly about stealing tithes and offerings. Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 and 9 says, Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, How have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. As uh, each, each person um, is stealing from God, the whole nation is uh, tithing, is a tithing is presenting a tenth of our income, acknowledging God's material sovereignty. It serves as the evidence of our faith in God who governs our life. Failing to tithe while claiming to believe in God equates to robbing God, leading to a curse. It's not that God curses those who don't tithe. Rather, even when Satan accuses them, God cannot protect them, which results in financial difficulties and other hardships. 
Some may tithe but fail to give a complete amount, resulting in a lack of divine protection. Your tithe has to be a tenth of all income, not just your salary. And all income includes side jobs, allowances, and gifts. However, However, some do the calculating only with their salary, excluding their additional income. Others deduct expenses before calculating their ties. There, we, nowadays, we have um, uh, there, are, there are taxes deducted from the income and and you, you receive salary after these taxes are uh, deducted. And, but his total income, his monthly income, is, includes his taxes. But, but we learned. But some people... I mean... Some, uh, Let's, when, when a person tries to in, transfer to a, another company, they... Uh, they, they, when they are applying for another job, they, so people before God, we have to be truthful. Uh, you may say, I, re, I haven't given tithes, but why am I not receiving blessings? But you have to examine what was missing. Still others calculate their tithes but arbitrarily offer them as missionary or charity offerings. But these cases are basically robbing God. Tithes must be given specifically as such, and their proper use is the church's responsibility. For more details, in the church, you have to make it clear that you are offering your... You, I mean, when you give offerings with an, for a specific purpose, the church uses that offering according to, exactly according to that purpose of your offering. But, but you should not for more details about tithing refer to the sermon on whole tithes and offerings next is withholding offerings Offerings refers to all offerings given in thanks other than tithes. God's saved children have countless reasons to be grateful for. We should be grateful for salvation and the path to heaven. We need to be thankful for the precious roles that help us build up our heavenly rewards. We should thank God for His protection and blessings. Also, believing that God would cause even troubles and challenges to work together for good, we, believers, only overflow with reasons for gratitude. The Bible says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Each Sunday, we don't come to worship empty-handed. We give thanksgiving offerings and set aside additional offerings for special events. This makes perfect sense. When people receive a favor or some help from others, they don't just feel thankful. Usually, they try to repay it with actions. Especially on holidays or their birthdays, they express their gratitude. 
This is not done out of a sense of obligation. People who know the duty of man naturally do that from their heart. How much more should we, who are filled with hope for heaven and grateful for salvation, be generous towards God? Each week, as we experience His grace and receive answers to our prayers, we are inspired to be more thankful and give even more to God. Some people claim to have faith, yet hesitate to thank God with their offerings. While they may tithe out of, out of fear of its connection to salvation, they can be miserly with other offerings and often reluctantly give due to others' opinions. But the Bible tells us no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and the love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. So, I am explaining that when one steals offerings that are to be offered naturally, this also relates to salvation. Being stingy towards God reveals a heart filled with greed for money and worldly lusts rather than love for God and hope for heaven. This may be understandable for new believers, but if people who've long been a Christian have such a heart, they will likely backslide in faith rather than gradually growing spiritually. Memories about the grace received fade away, and you have fewer reasons for gratitude. Thus, when one fails to give what is due, ultimately, it ultimately relates to their salvation. Of course, each one has a different measure of faith, and God, knowing our conscience, knowing our circumstance and hearts, doesn't focus on the amount given. Just as the widow who could only give two l e f t h a coins was praised by Jesus, God desires the fragrance of true gratitude and faith. If you please God with such fragrance, you will have blessings and gratitude far greater than what you have given. God will ensure that your soul prospers and daily fill you with more reasons for thanks, repaying you 30, 60, or a hundredfold. Dear brothers and sisters, may you wholly offer God what belongs to Him and generously offer by faith, thereby always enjoying His abundant blessings like a spring that never runs dry. Brothers and sisters, Another form of spiritual theft is robbing God's word, robbing God's word, like making false prophecies in God's name. Some claim to hear God's voice and speak about others' futures, like fortune tellers. For, for example, I've heard someone tell a person struggling in business, God has caused your failures because you must become a servant of the Lord. Alternatively, if you have a dream or see a vision in your own thought and claim, God has given me this dream, or He has shown me a vision, this also constitutes stealing God's word. This is taking God's name in vain, as explained in the third commandment session. Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 30 through 32 record, Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, declares the Lord, who steal my words from each other. Behold, I am against the prophets, declares the Lord, who use their tongues and declare. The Lord declares, Behold, I am against those who have prophesied, prophesied false dreams, declares the Lord, and led my people astray by their falsehoods and recklessness. I did not send them or command them, nor do they provide any benefit to these people, declares the Lord. Of course, understanding and proclaiming God's will under the Holy Spirit's inspiration is commendable, but it is essential to examine whether you are a suitable vessel for delivering God's word. The Holy God does not reveal His voice to just anyone. He wants to choose those who are pure and free from evil and declare His will through them. 
I urge you to always guard your mouth with vigilance and prevent yourselves from stealing God's word in your thoughts. Dear brothers and sisters, today we looked at the commandment of you shall not steal, which includes taking someone else's property without permission or acquiring it unjustly. We also addressed stealing from God. If you feel guilt or shame when taking something, you must reflect on yourself as you are seeking personal gain by taking what is not yours. The Holy Spirit grieves and troubles your conscience. The, what, the conscience what your conscience teach you, uh, some of you may become numb. So even after you t take and use someone else's belongings, you, you don't think of it as a big deal. But you may end up being disrespectful and, and you... As you habitually take others' belongings, you may end up stealing, but you don't feel it, which means your consciousness has become numb. If you're not... So you have to have the word as your standard, and, and you... So you have to have the word as your standard. So you have to check whether you easily or quickly take another person's belongings and don't give it back. You know, people of this kind easily give what they have to share with they, others. But, but what they have to do is, is not to take and use others, another person's belongings. For instance, even though you are not physically stealing, underperforming at work whilst being paid or neglecting the duties you've received will trouble you if you have a good conscience. When a person... Um, now, we are going towards the end of the year. You should not... <laughs> we, we, before we, we had an election for the next year in November but we changed it to December so but as we uh, we are going towards the end of the year uh, we are have to ch examine ourselves and some, some people um, have the duties as a district leader or sub-district leader and they are wholly devoted but but they have their uh, situation, their family situation, or their health issues. They cannot invest as much time as they want. Then they have to yield to others and let others, let others um, take the job so that they can bear more abundant fruit. If you are lazy or um, and cannot fulfill your duties well, it's better for you to let another person take the job and bear fruit. Even if so, those of you who want to carry out your duties, but but the situation does not allow, you can uh, let others uh, take the job. And when a person committed to God arbitrarily uses the sacred time for personal matters and causes loss to God's kingdom in terms of time, this equates to stealing time and leads to a troubled conscience. Pastors and Levi workers, they are being paid. 
So they have a designated time. Actually, we, the shepherd actually taught us that pastors, uh, there's no um, working hours for pastors or whatever. Whenever they ha- should, they have to carry out their duties. Anyway, we have our designated working hours. And also, some people um, devote more of their time to, for God's kingdom. But using God's time for private use is stealing. Even if you come to church and work, if you don't bear fruit, you are also wasting God's time, and so you have to feel troubled in your conscience. But if you are, have been in the habit of doing so, you don't feel any qualms of conscience. And let's say, while many Levite workers uh, bear fruit, you don't bear any fruit. and you just idly spend time, and you don't make efforts to improve yourself. And even so, you don't feel, you don't, you don't feel any qualms of conscience that you have to fix such areas. This applies not only to God's work, but also to secular jobs and personal relationships. By being punctual, you are not to cause anyone loss in terms of time. So, you can be complimented uh, and recognized even, in your, uh, even out in the world. If you, if you, dear brothers and sisters, I encourage you to cast aside all selfishness and greed and always seek the benefits of others with a good conscience and a sincere and faithful heart. I pray in our Lord's name that all of you will emerge as perfect children of God who are pure and blameless in the truth. Let's reflect on today's message in our prayer.